Hi, everybody. Welcome back to another live session. Thank you, as always, so much for being here. Uh, it's really the community that, that keeps this channel going. So um, a few things to discuss before we dive in. So I'm just going to casually kind of set the tone. Uh, we know as we're heading into the end of the year that things are slowing down. And obviously, if you don't know, typically for us YouTubers out there, December is classically a very, very slow month because we are not in the entertainment space. We're in the education space. And so um, with any job content, like all my creator friends like Holly Lee and Cass Thompson and, and Professor Heather Austin, all of which are channels I, I recommend you check out. Um, we could all tell you our analytics are going to totally drop through when it comes to December. So um, I know we probably won't have a huge audience today, but uh, absolutely happy to answer any questions. If this is your first time here, my name is Jeff H. Seip. I do practice interviews. I do negotiation and we have an interview mastery course, all of which you can find on practiceinterviews.com. We also have a free Slack group, nine free resources on the website. So all sorts of great opportunities to uh, get a lot of stuff for free. And obviously I'm here if you need the coaching. Uh, I just want to quickly uh, point out yesterday's video, you know, I handle and, and focus in on the influence question. So I did yesterday's video on tell me about a time you influence someone. Well, it's actually surprisingly a, a more common question. I got, I Googled it and there were 1.5 billion hits. That's a crazy number, right? So definitely check out that video. I don't do a sample answer there, but I do go through all the critical points. Um, I also like it on the open-ended side. How do you influence someone to see things your way? So some of those critical data points in that video from yesterday, I think will be really, really helpful. Uh, I don't think there's too much else um, to go over today. So we're going to just dive in and get through the questions again. I'm expecting a relatively short session. Lastly, uh, it doesn't all need to be questions, comments, feedback, anything that's going on in the market right now is also really, really helpful. I think that's it. All right, let's dive in. If you like what we're doing today, smash that like button. If you've never subscribed, uh, I do new content videos every other Monday and then I go live every Tuesday, 10 a.m. Pacific time, and we'll start to talk about the schedule. I'll probably take the last couple weeks of the year off. All right, let's dive in. Jeff, thanks for the amazing content. Made it to the team match stage for a non-GTEC role, Pittsburgh L5. Wondering if you have any recommended total comp targets for anchoring. Non-tech Pittsburgh L5, non-tech, probably total comp in the high twos is what I would expect, 280s, maybe up to 290 high. 280s, total comp year one is what I would expect. Um, I would definitely be anchoring probably in the mid threes, uh, probably like 348, 347, something like that. You can probably go a little bit higher, but non-tech in, in that market, yeah, probably high twos is what I would expect. Um, if I was notified yesterday about making it to the pool tracker, would hiring managers be able to find me right away? Is there some sort of lag period in between? Um, there shouldn't really be a lag. People should be able to find you. Yeah, that should, that should be a non-issue. I'm expecting an offer this week for Google for a CE role. Do they typically ask for expectations first or do they offer a figure? What total comp should I aim? Since the area, okay, so L6, 20 years of experience currently at Microsoft. Um, so it depends. You know, a good recruiter would absolutely wait for you to give comp expectations. Like that's a much better move for them when they lead. I, I never understand that. I, I would always get it first while I was there. And that's, that's what I would recommend to any recruiter. Uh, L5, or sorry, L6 CE. I mean, I would definitely be anchoring in the mid fives. I think you can anchor up into the high fives. Um, you know, I, it's it's varied quite a bit for CEs, but I, I've seen some good offers in lower tier markets that would be similar to Cincy um, that have gotten some pretty good compensation. So again, anchor at least in the mid fives for year one would be my recommendation. You can go higher if you want. Currently, print, band, and MS 
is it worth exploring L7? Well, L7 is if they'll do that for you. If it's getting approved at L6, um, then you simply want to just be asking if there's an opportunity to do additional interviews to get to a seven. Um, you're welcome. Thanks for being here. Would like to know if there's any other news that you can share or if you can share your insight. Um, yeah, I mean, I think for Google, you know, they're, they're probably going to consider layoffs. Uh, it's a consideration, you know, their brand is really important to them. So they will probably do everything they can to not lay people off. Um, all the whispers about getting rid of like the Deadwood and like the lower performing employees. Remember, only 5%, or at least this was when I was there, and I, I don't know the trends now, but about 5% of people fell in the new needs improvement category. So that's 5% of the company. So they could look at that 5% and just see if the people who are on performance improvement plans and like what is the path for them, for them it's possible. Um, so they could do it that way. They could do it by product area as well, if there's any underperforming product areas. But we haven't seen that. And there was that kind of letter from one of their bigger investors putting pressure on them. That investor, it's like TCI capital or something like that. I just don't believe that they have the influence. If you look at Google's overall portfolio, the fact that they think that they can influence, I think was real. I think that letter was really, really bad for their brand. Now this is playing in the billions of dollars and it's definitely not, you know, obviously I'm just a, I'm just a little guy, an outsider, but uh, I didn't think that that was great for their brand, but no new, real new news coming out. I'm just, you know, I think it's, it, we're all hearing the same thing that like Sundar is getting some massive, massive pressure. And I'm sure there's conversations with Larry and Sergey, and I'm sure it's, I'm sure it's top of mind for them. So uh, they'll probably try to avoid it as much as they can, but this is the business world. So anything's possible. You're the man. Thanks for that. Thanks for being here. Um, yeah, and I, I was kind of covering it in terms of layoffs, but obviously if anybody has any other questions, uh, I'm always happy to provide any insight. I do have inside sources in these companies and sometimes they're sharing data with me. Sometimes I, I've i poked my people quite a bit, so uh, sometimes I'll back off, but when I have an urgent need, there's people who I go to and I'm relatively aggressive and I think they, the people who respond to me instantly know that I have needs and, and and they'll do things for me. Okay. Uh, will it be more layoffs in 2023? Is now the right time to switch job? Yeah, and that was kind of the that was kind of the theme of the live for today. And that's why I created that thumbnail because I was kind of it, it was meant to me for meant for me to be leaning against that poll and like change jobs. Like I don't know. Um this question will come up in every single live, I can guarantee it, and probably multiple times because it has for months now. And the answer is, I don't know. I don't know if it's the right time to change jobs. I think if we're going from a potentially like less well-known company to a bigger brand like a Google or an Apple or a Meta or an Amazon, the brand has a ton of value. Now, obviously, usually we're going to get compensated more as well, but the brand, there is a value in that brand. It's just, it is difficult. I mean, we're seeing offers get rescinded at some of these companies, then people have left their jobs. So I think if you are going to make a move, maybe you want to be one of those people who has a little bit of backup, right? If, if the offer did get rescinded, could you go three to six months without a job? So maybe it's it the risk is appropriate to finances. I mean, it's just something to consider because there is some risk in moving. We've seen offers, people quit their jobs, they get an offer and the offers are rescinded. Meta did a lot of that. And I mean, it's that's really bad because then these people are in a down economy trying to find a job. The good news is, is if you can land jobs at those places, chances are you're a pretty good interviewer and you'll land a job somewhere else, but obviously not the ideal scenario. Hi Jeff, hope you're doing well. You have a Pixel product design engineer hardware final interview tomorrow. Your videos have been invaluable while preparing. Do you have any recommendations on preparing for a PD interview? 
Um, also, do you have any advice on design frameworks? Yeah, so um, pixel product design engineer. Like, So if you're going into a product design interview, um, there is a chance that there's some randomness in that interview. Uh, they, they could move you away from designing something in the hardware space, in the pixel space. So be ready for something random. Remember to always solve with that engineering mindset. And then with design, it's... Um, there are a number of concepts that you want to be thinking about with design. What I like about design is I want you to go and Google design frameworks. And then I, what I do with my product clients is I don't want you to pick one. Look at the top four or five design frameworks that you find online and kind of use a hybrid of those frameworks. There's going to be some concepts that you really like. There's going to be other concepts that maybe you don't utilize. You can stick to one of those frameworks that are pretty like they're pretty well defined for design but i would say really pick those concepts you like and then also with any framework we're bringing in our strengths we want to be talking about what we're good at and sometimes that can stretch the component of design a little bit but um hands down some of my product manager clients especially again i'm going heavy product here um, they really will use some of those classic and standard design frameworks um, but i want i want kind of a hybrid from you um, just a mix because that's probably what's going to lead to the most success i hope that helps uh, you're welcome how would you describe the tam position at google i mean it's not too dissimilar from any client facing GCP role, right? So you have to have some cloud knowledge, some technical knowledge, right? In the cloud space, it doesn't have to be GCP specific, but I can tell you your competitors are learning GCP. So like an interest, excitement and enthusiasm for cloud technologies, that's one. Uh, your collaboration, and interpersonal communication skills have to be excellent. And then I think the missing piece with TAM is internal. How do we work with internal teams to come up with the best solutions for the clients, right? Whether that's case studies, doing use cases, POCs, like what does that collaboration look like? As a TAM, you're not out on your own. There are so many people from architects, to sales engineers, to customer engineers, to solutions consultants, and all these people who are going to be involved in the process. Tap into that a little bit, okay? Um, that's pretty high level, but I hope that helps. Hey, good to see you. Um, Raul is our Slack data genius, and so if you haven't joined the Slack group, it's free, practiceinterviews.com, and, and you get a lot of good data there. The good news has arrived. Any guesses? You at least have a team match, if not an offer, but I'm the anticipation's pretty <laughs> pretty big for me. Let me see if you've come back and told us. I'm just gonna scroll all the way ahead. Okay. Um, well, I hope you at least hit a team match or they're moving to the offer stage, but, but let us know because um, we've been waiting for a while on that one. Sir, my new job at google this week as an l6 sweet thank you jeff for your great content interview prep and negotiation yeah peter congrats um we're still getting good news and last week i think we had five or six or seven people come in and say they got the job so these companies are still hiring so it's so great to see people coming in and just giving us this positive feedback thank you so much peter obviously i know that all the time and effort was on your end, and I'm just here to provide some tips. Made a big difference in the long hiring process. And that's the other thing. I mean, I hopefully I can add and we can take some deep breaths together because of this, the process, the current economy, everything, it just can be stressful. Peter, wish you the best of luck, L6 Sweet. That's a, that's a killer role. Awesome. Jeff, wanted to say hi and thank you. I'm following your sessions for a couple months now. Well, thanks so much for being here. I love it when people show up, especially as we get slower at the end of the year. Um, love seeing people still joining and still participating. Thanks for all your help. Passing the interviews at Google and Meta and through the salary negotiations. Yeah, Evan, uh, it's great working with you. Um, obviously, great results. And, you know, I'm so excited for you and 
And again, this is, it's just the, the positivity that we can bring into the community to show people that people actually are getting hired. This stuff is happening. It's just a little slower than normal. We're not at the 20 people in a live session coming in saying they got the job. But remember, all of this is on the people who put in the work and the time and the effort. I'm here to just give a few tips and tricks and maybe help you with your breath and help, help you stay a little calm in these stressful situations. But amazing. Thanks for being here. Hi, Jeff. Any advice on how to convert from a TVC to FTE? I applied constantly, also with referral, but got rejections. Almost give up, but I won't. Thanks in advance. So I actually did do a video on this, um, but obviously I'm here to answer these questions live. So you can check out that video. That was pretty recent. I think I did it within the last, it's been within the last couple months. So um, you really shouldn't be applying to any job if you're currently a TVC. Like you should not be applying, you should not be, that should not be part of your process. You should be building strong internal relationships and going directly to the source. Um, so there's probably just something missing. Now it's, it's harder to build those relationships now because of all the remote workers, the hybrid environment. I understand it's not like it was when I was there, but you should be trying to, when you're in the office, if possible, if you're not remote, be going to lunch with people, asking people to go to lunch, working with collaborative partners, be tapping into anybody within your network and finding out if they went TBC to FT, what they did. But yeah, applying to roles, I mean, I, that's, I wouldn't recommend that. You should really be building and fostering strong relationships. You have a huge advantage over the people who are trying to come in from the outside use that advantage to your benefit. Watch that video. Um, there'll be a lot of tips in there, but let me know if you have more questions. Okay, let me answer that one. Definitely considering your negotiation offering. Calls with recruiter today. Should I wait until I know what they're giving me before I sign up with an offer? And also, thanks for everything. Uh, no need to wait as long as you have your level confirmed, level, location, and role confirmed. I wouldn't wait. If you do have that conversation before we talk, just make sure no numbers. Just listen to them. If they're like, hey, I need numbers, say, hey, I just need another day. I've been really busy at work. I haven't had a chance to look at it. Can we go ahead and schedule a call? And if they're like, hey, do you know what you want? Just deflect, right? Um, I'd really like to talk to you beforehand. Um, so no numbers to the recruiter until we talk, but you can schedule that right now. I think I still maybe have one opening later today. Hey, Jeff, really enjoy all your content. You're expecting an L5 non-tech supply chain role based in Dallas this week. What should I anchor for coming from 15 years of experience? So this is going to be relatively similar to the Pittsburgh numbers. Um, the Dallas markets definitely is slightly more expensive than Pittsburgh, but uh, you know, non-tech supply chain Dallas, I, I would still expect your total comp year one to be in the high twos. Um, I wouldn't expect it to hit three. Now it's always possible, but you definitely should anchor in the mid threes at least, 340s, 350s, set that anchor high and expect for it to land in the high twos. Um, Non-tech supply chain roles are going to be still really, really pay well, but in comparison, in comparison to some other roles, not as well. But yeah, high twos. I hope that helps. Hi, Jeff. First round RRK scheduled for next week for cloud FSR role. Need good wishes and advice. I failed last year for the same role. All right, so FSR role, right? Sometimes what I've seen for these FSR roles, like, you want to have your classic questions of examples of success with difficult clients, et cetera, closing big deals. But they might ask you, I've seen some really basic questions thrown at FSRs, like how do you close a deal? How do you win a deal? Like sometimes it's very, very simplistic questions. Remember, if you get anything really vague, which sometimes they throw at FSRs, just make sure you're clarifying framework, make some assumptions like you're in the role and solve. Um, but it's it's pretty classic sales questions, but just be ready for some of the ambiguity, some of the big questions. I've seen a bit of that for FSRs. Hi, Jeff. Love your videos, especially the salary negotiation. What's your compensation suggestions in this current market? 
Is 20% higher than your target number still a good idea? Um, yeah, I mean, 20, 30%. It just, it depends on the company, right? Like, so what do we know? We know a company like Google, for example, you know, let's say the job pays 200K a year USD. Like if you ask for a million dollars, they're not going to remove the offer as long as you're nice about it. So you can anchor pretty high with Google. It's just about knowing the company culture. You just got to be really careful on our anchoring. Some companies don't respond well. So knowing the cultural things, if you're unaware and you don't know and it's not Google, just a good resource is teamblind.com. Again, that's teamblind.com. They have just some really, really good data um, in terms of what people experience at companies that are maybe less well-known. I hope that helps. 20 to 30%, that was great. I have my RRK2 and GNL and GCA for TAM at Google Upcoming. Recruiter told me they need to push this so HC will have my package by end of next week, decision offer by end of year. Can I leverage their push? Um, no, I mean, I, I think you just have to be ready for all the interviews, but I don't think there's going to be any real great leverage on your end. They want to close it out this year and you should be motivated to do the same, but I don't think you can really leverage that. And if we mean leverage, like leverage at the negotiations that they want to close everything out, I don't think so. Um, but obviously I'm always very, very aggressive with the negotiation phase. If that doesn't answer your question, come back, let me know. Hi, Jeff. Thanks for posting all these insights. They're really helpful. I have my virtual on-site with an Alphabet company. I was hoping if you have any advice for interviewing at a bet. Yeah, the bets have kind of adopted a similar style of interviewing, so it's really no different. Um, you know, with the bets, the, the biggest thing is, is when you get to the offer stage, you're going to be assuming more risk from a compensation perspective, especially on the equity side of things. So it's just something to consider. Now, the bets are really cool. They're really fun. So, um, but nothing really different. Just be ready for any behavioral or open-ended questions. Oh, sorry. That's for a TPM role. Yeah, so technical program managers, right? Like the program manager fundamentals, like just pro like, like there's so much, there's duality between product and project and program management, but just those fundamentals of goals and budget and timeline and risk and data get to the fundamentals of program management. They're going to need to see this. And then technical, it's going to be technical domain. So whatever bet you're going after, it's really going to focus in on your technical domain expertise. Just be ready for both. Okay. That they're really testing both sides of the coin. I hope that helps. Hey, Jeff, love your videos, especially. Oh, okay. You answered that one. No need to double up on questions. I'll get to everything. Uh, hi, Jeff. Can you spare some advice for a fresh student getting out of college? Yeah, I mean, I think the biggest thing I would recommend for college students is that the reality is, is that interviewing is absolutely a skill. Negotiating is absolutely a skill. And I think that if you're a fresher, and you're just getting out of college, um, and fresher is kind of like the international term, but if you're just getting out of college, like practice your interview skills, practice with other people, that skill set over time literally will earn you millions more dollars over your career. So just dive in, dig in, get into the weeds. Um, obviously, even after getting out of college, sometimes taking on apprenticeships or intern jobs, just anything that's going to get you experience, but work those interview skills. I think for a lot of us who are maybe a little older and didn't focus in on that as a skill set earlier in our career, probably wish we could have gone back and done it because interviewing is so important. Um, and again, will make you a ton more money over time. Thoughts on joining a startup with a healthy two-year cash runway during this time if they have a solid product results? Yeah, I mean, if they have a two-year cash runway um, with solid product results, I think those are both good signs. I mean, with the economy, like we, we can only make best guesses, but having a lot of cash on hand and having a, like, a confirmed product that the consumers want and hopefully a good sales and marketing plan, um, it sounds really positive to me. Yeah, if you want to come back and tell us more, please do. 
After eight interviews, seven long months, you finally received the offer for a CE Informod specialist. Amazing. Now you know what to do. You got to negotiate that offer. Um, you really, really got to push back. Remember, be gracious and kind. Um, it's just going to be so critical that you continue to negotiate as much as possible. And remember, one of the big things with Google that I always recommend is when Google comes in and says best and final, like they're not going to move anymore, our final ask needs to be a push, but something reasonable. You know, usually if we're coming in for one of these roles, maybe it's just an additional 30K or 40K USD over four years in equity. But best and final, about 50% of my clients will get more at the best and final stage. And that's like a one to two minute conversation. So it's definitely worth it. But just the foundation is thank you. I appreciate it. Set that high anchor and then just ask them to advocate for you partner with you make sure that they are a part of the journey with you okay it's going to be critical so glad you're at this stage we waited a long time for this and and you've been an amazing contributor to our slack community like and when it's all said and done i think it's time for you to go off the slack community obviously if you want to stay happy to keep you there but um yeah congrats it's amazing amazing news keep us updated um with the progress I was thinking about salary negotiation leverage because I'm flexible on leaving my current job and I'm able to start in January. Oh yeah. Again, that's, I would not call that leverage. Um, you're thinking about negotiation leverage. You're flexible because you're flexible on leaving your current job. Again, I don't, I don't see that as leverage. Um, what I do see it as leverage is, Understanding negotiation, understanding the foundation of graciousness and kindness, understanding that if you push back, but you push with a very soft tone. Um, this is this is Chris Voss, Never Split the Difference. If you've ever never read that book, read that book. It's it's the late night DJ radio voice where we go low and slow. We go low and slow. We lower our tone so it comes across very soft, but your ability to start soon, your ability to get through the interviews, I, I don't see that as leverage personally. And then would they do salary negotiations between the holidays? They will not. Okay, I would not expect them to be doing any negotiating during that week. Can I take a week and officially sign the recruiter is hurrying up? Uh, well, I wouldn't delay the time um, I wouldn't take a week to think about it with current offer. I would just take that time to continue to negotiate. I would continue to try and drive up that offer. Whatever that offer is, it's not enough. So just make sure that you're continuing to push back, continuing to negotiate. And once you get the final, final best offer and they will not move anymore, then it's time. Um, then at that point, you can say, okay, maybe I need a couple of days. I mean, a week, I think you've been in this journey long enough to know that you're, um, that you're gonna probably accept, but I want you to make sure you're driving that compensation up as much as you can. Yes, I, well, I, I want you to stay in the Slack community um, and I definitely love to give back. I think you're our best contributor on that platform. I don't think that anybody would argue with that. So. Um, We'd love to keep you. And, and, you know, we see that from other people like Tina, who is our famous uh, ABP, and, and she's been contributing to the community, and she got the job at Google. It's uh, I think it's been like a year and a half ago. So it's really, really fun to see people hang out and continue to, to be a part of that Slack community. Okay, we're 29 minutes in. Um, we got about 34 attendees now, you know, again, I know it's the end of the year. It's super slow. I'm going to continue to go live. Um, so we're sitting at the 29th. I'm going to go live probably the next couple of weeks and then take the final two weeks off of the year. I'll also skip that last every other Monday original content posting. We're here now. If you have additional questions, let me know. Okay, here we go. And then I'm going to, I'll kind of probably roll out and 
and kind of pitch my services one more time and answer any questions as they come in. Again, I'm happy to answer anything. I knew it would be, we're just super slow right now. And you can, if I actually, I'll probably share this and I'd love to know from the community um, if you want me to share this, I can show my YouTube statistics over the last three months. I mean, it's, I mean, it's taken a full plummet. And I think, you know, when we go live, part of it is just us being real with the community. I mean, everybody's kind of feeling the squeeze and the pain of the current economy. And I, I, I am no different. Like my business changed drastically in July. And so, um, you show up and I'll continue to show up as well. All right, we got some more questions coming in, which is great. Let's let's keep going. Well, let me let me pause for a second. If you've never been here before, my name is Jeff H. Seid. The business is practiceinterviews.com. I do interview coaching one-on-one, -on -one, negotiation coaching one-on-one, -on -one, and we have an interview mastery course. We're getting tons of good feedback on that course. Two great free resources. Sign up for our free Slack community at practiceinterviews.com. And we have nine free resources that you can download. They're all fantastic. It's all free. Uh, left agency role for a three-month contract at Meta, October through January 2023, as a client solutions manager. Knew the risk and was willing to take it, making 2x more, but with layoffs and hiring freezes. Okay. I'm worried about future opportunities. Anything I can do? Yeah, Molly, your number one move is... Build the relationships daily. You've got to work those relationships as much as you can. Show that you're indispensable, right? And that you would be a great asset to the organization moving forward. That's all you can do. Just work, work, work those relationships, especially collaborative relationships. When you have to collaborate with somebody outside of the team, grow your personal brand so it's so strong that if at the end of the contract it ends, you will be remembered You'll have connected with all these people on LinkedIn. You'll have an opportunity to stay in touch. Hey, build a spreadsheet with all these people's names, contact info, your relationship. I mean, I've never really suggested that, but it's if we know that in three months, there's a likelihood that this contract might end, let's capture that data and information so we can come back to these people because once we leave, we're just not going to be able to remember everything. I hope that helps. If you have more questions, let me know. I interviewed for a TAM role. I was told my interview feedbacks were mostly good, I hope. I had to do another RRK outside of RRK1 and RRK2. Recruiter mentioned they're trying to determine L4 versus L5. Okay. Um, I was told that the feedback was overall great and you, you're up for HC and you believe you have a team match already. Okay. I say believe as there seems to be some role pre-prioritization pre pause in the last few months, which led to some delays in my case. Okay. And you're wondering on how much are the chances to get through HC? Yeah, so percentage chances, unfortunately, this is where I get a little annoying. I, I can't tell you. I just don't know. Um, I have seen, you know, all the client facing GCP roles, they've hired the most of any role TAMs over the last five months. Um, TAMs have been the, the position that they've hired for the most. Just gotta continue to build that great relationship with your recruiter, stay in touch with them, ask them, how often should I check in with you? Once every week, once every two weeks, once a month, just make sure you're building that good relationship with them. That's gonna be critical. I hope that helps. It's really going to buy time in negotiating and negotiating. Okay, good. Yeah, I mean, remember, slow and steady wins the race, but it doesn't need to be super slow and steady when negotiating. I believe space is absolutely valuable. Current economic times have changed my tone a little bit. I'm a little bit more aggressive on the negotiation from a timing perspective, but between one and two negotiations, you know, maybe a day or two, like don't let it linger a week between each negotiation. I'm trying to get a new certification for a technical consultant role. I just got a new referral from a GCP colleague. Should I add it to my resume? And hi, Jeff. I like that. Okay, so yeah, absolutely add it to the resume. Will it make a huge difference? Probably not, but it will make a difference in the process, right? It's going to make a difference in your success 
because you're learning things, right? Let's just go back to this for a second. So any, any type of certification, look, I'm a huge, huge learning fan. We all need to up our learnings. We just have a huge opportunity, like with all the resources we have. And then the other piece I always recommend, now maybe not for a certification or a course, but me, if you want to go back and watch five or 10 of my videos, watch me on 2X. Once you hit that 2X, you'll realize that my pace is so slow that you can watch me on 2X and have it, you'll, it'll have no impact. I do all my Audible, all my learning at 2X. And what does that mean? It means I consume twice as many books a year. And you'll find that at first it sounds like it's going fast, it's going fast, 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 fast. But then your brain will adapt to it really quickly. So um, just another suggestion. Add it to the resume. Um, I just think the overall learning is what's the most important. What do you mean exactly by high twos, low threes when you're talking about those numbers? 285, 287, 291, 278, that's high twos. Anything above 275, would I put in the high two category. And then low threes, I mean low threes again, 305, 307, 313. Anything below 325 would be low threes. Uh, I hope, yeah, sometimes I... I throw in that jargon pretty quickly. But, you know, again, I think if we're going back to your numbers, we were talking about mid threes as an anchor, 347, 348, 349, 355, 356 as your anchor number. You really want to work those numbers. What's the base? The bonus percentage is going to be 15%. I believe it was an L5. So 15% base bonus. And then what's the equity? Remember the equity is 33, 33, 22, 12. And then you can kind of get to that number. Unique numbers are good. When we say flat numbers, it's not based on anything. Like if we say 350, likely the base bonus and equity will not come out to a flat 350. So we want to make those numbers unique like we've done our research. I hope that helps. Hi, Jeff. Recruiter reached out yesterday. The hiring manager has decided to not move forward with my candidacy since there was a good candidate pool. Would you recommend applying to the same role later? Thanks for all you do. Um, yeah, I mean, I would prefer that you build a strong relationship with the recruiter and say, hey, can I touch base with you in six to nine months? Or six months is a really good time. Usually it's fine to apply to that role. I recommend around the nine month time frame. They'd like to give you about a year if it's the same exact role. Uh, but if you can build that relationship with your recruiter, that's helpful. That doesn't always happen, but it's it's my recommendation. Sorry to hear about that. Oh, okay, I think we answered that one. Would it be okay to hit you up on the Slack for a quick chat? Raul, for you, always. Okay, hit me up, please. Um, yeah, absolutely, you're welcome. Uh, please keep up the good work. You submitted new applications with referral. Quick question. When it says, when you say it's been a long time, how long is it that to help set expectations? Um, when you say it's it's been a long time. Um, I'm not sure of the question, Liz. I'm going to have you come back and re-ask that question. Thanks. You are welcome. Uh, hey, Jeff. You were mentioned on your YouTube stats have been down recently and how the business has been affected this year. What keeps you motivated? I mean, it's this community, right? And, and like candidly, I work for myself. I have a business. I got to keep the business up and running. And if the revenues are down, which they are significantly, I still need to support my family, right? So I'm going to keep going. I mean, obviously the community keeps me up. The positive comments keep me up. Look, I mean, all the stuff that comes in, not all of it's positive, right? And and that's that's kind of par for the course, right? You put yourself in any job and you you have to know and set the expectations mentally of like, well, what are going to be some of the challenges? But this is awesome. Look at all the gratitude, the graciousness, the kindness, right? Like this is a huge foundational item for me. And I think that people who watch my content get it. So it's kind of like seeing all these nice comments and all the positivity. Look at how positive this community has been all day today. So I get a lot of energy off of people. <laughs> Obviously, I'm talking to a video. I love to be in a more public forum where we can like build off of each other's energy. But um, I'm going to keep going. And I think I've been like, I've been hinting at this and I'm going to continue to hint at it because I'm not there yet. But I am, 
I've taken this downtime to roll out a new business. So I'm going to be uh, doing a new business and I'll be letting the community know more about that as, as it continues to evolve. Cause I think the cool thing about being an entrepreneur without going too long into this is just that the more time you spend as an on- entrepreneur, the more opportunities you see and you see different business paths. And if anybody out there is considering being an entrepreneur, um, they're, the, the date is kind of like after three years, you need to start pivoting the business. And I've been running this business for about four years. Um, but the first year, obviously, was super, super sleepy. You're just growing it. And then the last three years have been super busy. And so as you look at any business, um, you really do want to be pivoting or, or making some significant moves after a few years. That's what I've read multiple times. Thanks for the question. Hey, Jeff, recruiters contract. Hey, Jeff, recruiters contract ended a few weeks ago and you're stuck in the team match stage was connected to a new recruiter but my old one recommended i reach out next year mid-january okay let's see how do i get to building a relationship with a new recruiter is it possible that they will prioritize candidates in their pipeline yeah um i think it's very possible and so if your other recruiter recommended mid-january follow up with that recruiter, the new recruiter, and just say, hey, I just wanted to reach out, you know, based on the timeline and all the reprioritizations, the old recruiter that I was working with had recommended touching base in mid-January, just with all the moving pieces. I'd like to just confirm that that's a good time for me to re-reach out to you. You're going to start to build a relationship with them. You're confirming the other data that this recruiter gave you. And We're not like inundating them with emails all the time, but this is one good follow-up one. But that's my recommendation. Something as simplistic as that, I think would be valuable. Thank you for the motivation. Awesome, thanks for being here. For the community, as Jeff asserts with respect to Google, your recruiter and your terms with the recruiter makes a mountain of difference in the sea of candidates. Yeah, I mean, look, These recruiters are busy. And I can tell you the the tone of candidates overall isn't super positive. It can be pretty pushy, sometimes a little arrogant, right? And so anybody who's a part of this community, you will build a much better relationship with graciousness and kindness. And why? We like people who are nice. It's just the reality, right? Uh, Think about your family members, your friends, the ones who are the nicest are probably the ones you like the most. I mean, that's just the way it works. So we will transition and and translate that into the relationship with our recruiters. Thanks for that. Are referrals basically a must for Google, assuming most candidates come from a referral, but that's purely a guess. Um, Referrals are helpful. Yeah, they're helpful because there's a, there's an escalation, right? It's like, it's like you apply and then there's a referral. So the likelihood that your application will get seen is, is greatly increased. Now, what are the averages globally for any company? About 10% of their hires are people who apply online, especially the big companies that get a lot of applicants, right? So 10%. So 90% of people are getting hired by not applying. So it's just really important that if you do have the opportunity to get a referral, it's helpful. Now, referrals that know you are going to be much more helpful than people who were just pushing to give us referrals just to get in the door. I hope that helps. For people to get an offer, you commented, you commented, I'm happy to hear it's been a long time. I was wondering if we're talking three, six, nine months. Yeah, so for Raul, it was um, it was seven months in the process, um, which for today's standards, based on anybody who interviewed pre-hiring freeze in mid-July, it's not uncommon, but seven months in his case. Yeah, um, sometimes it's longer uh, for some people in the community, but that's that's a long time right, to be in the process anyway. Should I try to slip some role-related knowledge if I have a GCA with the HM? Well, yeah, of course, because um, what you're trying to do is you're trying to make your GCA interview, you're solving the questions wearing the hat of the role. So absolutely, you will bring in role-related knowledge. That's going to be a critical aspect for success. Absolutely, 100%. But not forced, right? It's got to be natural, but you're solving whatever the question is 
wearing the hat of the role. So it should be role related always. Great question. Um, contractor met again, working relationships, taking advantage of learnings, but reorgs will likely not lead to an extension. Meta enough to impress tech hires. Any other search advice? Um, wait a second. But reorgs will like. Yeah, I I agree with you, Molly. I don't think you're going to get extended. I mean, I I can't say for sure. It's just knowing everything. I wouldn't expect contractors on short-term contracts at any of these big companies to get extended. So to impress is three months at Meta. Yeah, absolutely. Three months is. One interaction, one amazing interaction with you is enough to impress me, right? As somebody internal, maybe go to bat for you. So just the biggest thing to remember is people like talking about themselves. So when you build these relationships, what do you love about the company? What do you love about the role? What is the coolest thing you're working on? Um, what do you love, love, love? Like get them talking about themselves, get them to open up to you. People really like talking about themselves and all the data and science proves that they'll like you more the more questions that they answer about themselves. So that's one of the ways that you can have success in those types of conversations. Also, wouldn't have landed this role or related stages of interviews if not for you. Thank you. Thanks, Molly, for being here. I mean, I always tell people the same thing. I, I'm here to provide some advice, but so much of that is backed up by the hard work that you're doing behind the scenes. People have no idea. I mean, you should see, I mean, it's, I wish I had some, well, I think one of my clients, a couple of my clients have seen the screenshot. If you've ever seen the movie, uh, Beautiful Mind, where he's got like the wall with all like the scenarios and, and equations and all that stuff. Like that's what some of my clients do. Like that's the amount of work and effort they're putting in. And I, I just think that if we equate the time versus comp model, it's like, well, the time what we put in behind the scenes to be good interviewers and negotiate well is totally worth it in the long run. Thanks for that. Hi, Jeff. Currently in winter host matching for NA for SWE intern. Host matching still hasn't started, even though it's nearing December. Any idea for number of projects or anything in process? All I can tell you is internships are super, super slow right now. Um, it's just interns have been deprioritized now ironically they should be prioritized because it's the lowest cost of labor for really excellent talent so it should be actually prioritized but um no pulse on on how much they're going to ramp up interns right now sorry it's just it's going to be slow and i would anticipate that it's going to be slow congrats Raul. yeah yeah absolutely remember Right now, I mean, I have negotiation clients back from, um, you know, June and July, a bunch of them. And they're just kind of going through the team match, getting team matches here or there. So um, I imagine that for many of them, it will be, you know, six to nine months, um, probably closer to seven, eight or nine. So um, not uncommon to see it in this time. Isn't Google angry because you're giving all the magic away with a good amount of details? Thanks for everything. So um, what I try to do is I try to share all information without really telling anybody anything confidential, meaning anything that can't be found in other sources online isn't being shared in a forum or a platform. So it's like finding the balance of of sharing enough details, but keeping it confidential enough where I'm not going to get in trouble with them. And the funniest part of this journey is that a lot of my clients tell me that they found me because Google recruiters recommended me and I don't know pretty much any of these people. So um, that's been a cool experience for me. Um, and I think, you know, candidly, I've been supporting the Google thing for a while and that won't happen for forever, but I don't believe that I don't believe that there's anybody really like tracking or following unless I was giving away like lots of confidential information. Best way to negotiate your salary when you get an early promotion. I know what the person in my role made, but they had three more years of experience in a master's degree. How do you push for a similar comp? So negotiate your salary when you get an early promotion. So number one about negotiating salary when promoted 
is just understanding the overall company culture and philosophy. You know, some companies just will not increase offers on a promotion while others will. So that's that's the foundational one. And Richard, I'm just throwing that out there for the audience. Maybe you already know that you can negotiate. Secondly, is to go in with, uh, it's basically a case study of the value you bring, why you were promoted quickly, what you bring to the table. And then lastly is the backup plan. Sometimes we don't get what we want initially. And so the biggest thing when we go in for these pay raises or any kind of raise off of something that's happened internally, what would I need to do over the next three months to get a pay raise, to bring that salary up? And then you actually come in with a plan. It's structured. It has a system behind it. Um, Because if you do that, that will lead to success. I do have in the negotiation playlist a pay raise uh, video that I think has some good tips, but those are a couple of items I would recommend. I've learned this now. Good things like a job at Google are also to test your patience along with your skills and expertise. Yeah, patience is critical. Um, Patience has always been critical with Google, you know, and I, I think that I am critical of their slow process. I think it's incredibly painful to candidates and it's painful to be on the recruiting side and watch how slow things are. And it's just gotten slower every year. It seems like it gets slower and slower. Okay. We're at the end of questions. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my wrap up. If any additional questions come in, I'll take them. My name is Jeff H. Seip. If this is your first time here, the business is practiceinterviews.com. I do one-on-one interview coaching, one-on-one negotiation coaching. I mean, we just crush it. The the ROI on negotiation coaching is crazy. Uh, Interview mastery course, tons of good feedback, and then free resources. The Slack community, join it um, at practiceinterviews.com or our nine free resources. I'm going to answer any last-minute questions, and then I'm going to sign off, and I'll be back next week, Tuesday, 10 a.m. Pacific time. Um, If you like what we did today, smash that like button. If you've never subscribed, consider subscribing. Thank you for being here. Your questions are being skipped. Um, Okay. Why don't you come in and give those questions? I don't see any of your questions. And I don't have any of your questions. I'm just scrolling through. Um, So none of your questions have come up, at least on my side. Um, I can't see any of them. And I'm just scrolling back all the way through. Yeah, none of your questions came up on my end. Um, So let's see. I don't see any. So if you want to go ahead and throw those in there. Otherwise, uh, in the Slack community, if, if the questions don't come up. But I, I didn't see any questions come in today. Uh, in Richard's question about negotiating the raise after promo, that's negotiating with your manager. Seems different than negotiating with HR. 100%. Totally different negotiation. And that's why you bring data to the table. right? That's why you say, here's what I've done. And that's why you can come up with a specific plan to get more if they don't want to give it to you now. Because it is with your manager. That's correct. Yeah, maybe it is, Um, but you're coming through now. So as I finish out these questions, just come in with with your question um, because I'm happy to answer it again. Otherwise, we can default to the Slack community. Um, For Google, L7 EM role, how does starting a team size, say 15 versus 30, affect total comp? Um, It wouldn't, but I... Team size, like you're not going to have, you're not going to have a team of 15 or 30. Now, maybe roll up, but direct reports should be a much, much smaller number. Uh, But the amount of people, they're not, comp isn't going to say this EM has 20 people and 15 people and this person has 30, they get paid double or whatever, not double, obviously. But um, I haven't seen that having an impact personally. What is safer, Microsoft or Google? I don't know. I'm not sure. Um, both, both are showing signs. I mean, Microsoft has shown earlier signs of, of a couple of, I, I want to say cracks, but I don't even think that's the right word. Um, I, I think that I've traditionally always seen Google as the safest bet just because globally they have the best brand. People can argue with that, but it's, it's just the reality. Um, so I think Google's safer. They've they've really pushed off of layoffs as much as they can. So thank you everybody for being here. Uh, we we got almost to an hour, which was pretty good because at first I didn't know how long we'd make it. Um, but 
Thank you for being here. Any questions, again, if they didn't get answered, default back to our Slack community, and I'll be back next week um, at 10 a.m. Pacific time. Thanks so much.